Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome again, brothers and sisters, to another episode in the series Gardens of the Righteous. With myself here is Sheikh Haytham Al Haddad, who is from the UK and is currently on the Sharia Council of Britain and is also the founding member of the website www.islam21c.com. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Alhamdulillah, now we have covered all of the ahadith in the first chapter of Riyadh al Salihin, which is Ikhlas. Yes. Before we move on, I think it's a good idea for us to summarize and to mention very important lessons that yeah. we can take. Okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah. The first chapter was Al-Ikhlas, sincerity. What is sincerity? It is to worship Allah Jalla wa Ala alone. It is to worship Allah Jalla wa Ala alone, which means that you don't associate anyone with Allah Jalla wa Ala when you worship Allah Jalla wa Ala. And we said this means that ikhlas is nothing but tawheed. Yes. Ikhlas is tawheed. Allah Jalla wa Ala says, وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَّا لِعَبُدُ اللَّهَ مُخْلِصِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ And this is the first ayah the author, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, quoted. They were commanded but to worship Allah Jalla wa Ala with full sincerity. Now, as we said, ikhlas is tawheed. But tawheed is, you know, the start for the person to enter Islam. Once the person enters Islam, he needs tawheed all of the time because he might fall into shirk that does not negate his Islam or he might fall into shirk that might negate his Islam. So he needs ikhlas all of his time. And if the person negates ikhlas, then he is falling into shirk. That's why we said, Tawheed is nothing but ikhlas. Ikhlas is nothing but tawheed. And we don't want to talk about ikhlas, sincerity, in isolation from the academic discussion regarding tawheed. And we also don't want to discuss the issue of tawheed, the oneness of Allah Jalla wa Ala, again in isolation from the discussion about sincerity and doing things only for Allah Jalla wa Ala. How can you be sincere for other than Allah anyway? Yes. Okay. So if we say that ikhlas is to worship Allah Jalla wa Ala alone, and ikhlas is tawheed, and tawheed is ikhlas, they are the same thing, then we will understand that ikhlas is the essence of our Islam. Yes? فَعْبُدِ اللَّهَ مُخْلِصَ اللَّهُ الدِّينَ As Allah Jalla wa Ala commanded Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. Worship Allah مُخْلِصًا لَهُ الدِّينَ Allah Jalla wa'ala says, وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ مُخْلِصِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ Allah Jalla wa'ala also says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْدِّينَ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونِ يَعْبُدُونَ means to worship me alone, which is ikhlas. And that's why any action without ikhlas will be invalid. Any action without ikhlas will be invalid. And meaningless. And meaningless. So, if there is no ikhlas completely, the action will be rejected. If there is no ikhlas in our life, if an individual doesn't know anything about ikhlas, yeah, and his life is not based on ikhlas, it means that this person is a mushrik or is a kafir. So the ikhlas to start with is the gate that takes you to Islam, as we say that tawheed is the start for you to start your Islam. So it is the most important thing in our life. After we get into the gate of al-ikhlas, we need to observe ikhlas in every single action. And any action that is missing ikhlas huh, will be what? Null and void. That's why the Prophet ﷺ said actions are judged by their intention. So if there is a wrong intention, the actions will be null and void. As the Prophet ﷺ said in this hadith, which was introduced by the author as the first hadith, which is Hadith Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, which is the first Hadith mentioned in Sahih al-Bukhari. And in the Qur'an, in the Qur'an, Allah Jalla wa Ala says, فَمَنْ كَانَ يَرُجُوا لِقَاءَ رَبِّهِ فَلْيَعْمَلْ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا 
the one who desires to meet Allah Jalla Ala, which means to be rewarded by Allah Jalla Ala, to meet Allah Jalla Ala in the Jannah, where we are going to see Allah Jalla Ala in Jannah. Wujuhun yawma idin nadirah ila rabbiha nadirah. This is our ultimate aim. Lilladina ahsanu al-husna wa ziyada. For those who did well, they will have the perfect al-husna, which is Jannah, and more, which is what? Siyal. Looking at Allah Jalla Ala. So, if you want to look at Allah Jalla Ala in the akhirah, as some scholars say, don't look at anything other than Allah Jalla Ala in the dunya. It's always beautiful to keep this in mind. If you want to look at Allah Jalla Ala in the akhirah, don't look at anyone other than Allah Jalla Ala by your deeds in the dunya. And the more you look at Allah Jalla Ala in your deeds in the dunya, the more you will look at Allah Jalla Ala in the akhirah. Because, as this scholar said, because of some narrations from the Sahaba and the second generation, that people will differ in terms of how much they will look at Allah Jalla Ala in Jannah. Some of them, as some of the Sahaba or the Tabi'in of the second generation, said that the highest people in Jannah will see Allah Jalla Ala every day twice. And because they will see Allah Jalla Ala twice, they will have no pleasure, no happiness, no feeling better than that feeling, no pleasure. It cannot be compared with any kind of pleasure, food, properties, families, no pleasure like that pleasure. And he said, and then because they have seen Allah Jalla Ala, yeah, as the Prophet ﷺ said, you will see Allah Jalla Ala on the day of resurrection as you see the moon. There will be no barrier. Huh? Because they will see Allah Jalla Ala in Jannah, they will be better in terms of their beauty, in terms of their shapes, in terms of their qualities, and they will become better. Yeah? Even their beauty and their figures. So they will go to their families. And because their families, they are going to see the person who saw Allah because of this, Allah Jalla wa ala will make them better, even in terms of their figures. So their families will see them and will ask them, what happened to you? They will say, we have seen Allah. That's why we became like this. And they will say to their families, what? happened to you, they say, because we see you and you have seen Allah, we became better in shape. No comparison to anything else. No comparison to anything else. If, my dear brothers and sisters, and this is a reminder for myself, if we want to be looking at Allah Jalla wa ala like this on the day of resurrection, we should not look at anyone other than Allah Jalla wa ala by our deeds in the dunya, and this is ikhlas. We should make sure we always keep it solely for him. Solely for him. That's why most of the definitions we have, yeah, is to purify your deeds from nazar al-khalq. Means you don't worry about others when they are looking at you. And you are focusing on nazar al-khalq. You are focusing on creator, not creation. the creator, not the creation. Also, they say that to make Allah Jalla wa ala as your ultimate goal. This is another important definition of ikhlas. Don't aim lower. Don't aim lower. What does that mean? I want to mention this about ikhlas. They say sometimes the person might do something because of a temporary reason or a temporary goal. Mm -hmm. But the ultimate goal is something else. If the ultimate goal is his pleasure, this is a class. For example, I might work 
in order to provide for my family. So I am working to do what? Provide my family. So this is what? This is not ikhlas because I'm providing for my family. You need to ask yourself another question. Why are you providing for your family? So if the intention behind that intention is a good intention, then this is ikhlas. This is sincerity and this is a very good deed. So we should always make sure that we the look at our intentions. Aim. Yes. So we should look at our intentions and make sure they are for Allah. No, not just looking at our intentions. The intention behind the intention behind the intention until we get to the end. If the end is intending Allah, then this is sincerity. Sometimes we are pleasing our parents. It might be a good deed by itself. But if you, for example, you think that it is a matter of honor, or this is culture. a good akhlaq, or this is culture, or you don't want to be embarrassed, or you don't want to be called names, but Allah is not in your mind, and is not the motivation for you, then this is not ikhlas. Yeah? So this is one of the matters that negate ikhlas. Okay. Brothers and sisters, please come back to us after the break. We shall continue this very important discussion. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Salah is the mother of all worships. Salah is your appointment with Allah. Salah is the safe haven of the believer. Salah is your gateway to happiness. Salah is the wish of the deceased. So join me for Salah Revisited and discover what you've been missing out on. Understand the remarkable guidelines that help in making our Salah rewarding and acceptable in Salah Revisited every Sunday at 11 p.m. and repeat telecast at 12 p.m. UK on Peace TV. Where truth is hidden, misleading quotations create confusion. Where truth is hidden, lack of knowledge and wisdom cause upheaval and commotion. Where truth is hidden, manipulate scriptures and twisted facts emerge. This very hidden truth creates false propaganda, mayhem, chaos, disorder, and turmoil in our lives and the world order. But is there anyone with courage and wisdom? What is the truth? And who has the courage to expose it? Because it's your right to know the truth. Right. Watch Truth Prevail and Lies Perish in Truth Exposed by Dr. Zakir Naik. Next on Peace TV. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome, brothers and sisters, to the continuation of this discussion between myself and Sheikh Haytham al Haddad on the first chapter in Riyadh al Salihin, which is Al Ikhlas. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You were just trying to conclude and summarize for us the first chapter of Ikhlas. Obviously, it is very difficult to conclude it, but I will mention the most important things. So, Ikhlas is to make Allah Jalla wa ala as your final goal. These three 
If you intend any of them, it is a valid reason, it is a valid intention, it is an acceptable intention, and you will be rewarded for it. However, the best of it is just to please Allah, to do things just to please Allah. So Allah will be pleased and happy and satisfied with you. However, if you add all the intentions, that will be better. You will be rewarded for all of them. You will be rewarded for them. And this shows that. Ikhlas, ikhlas gives us, first of all, the validity of actions or the invalidity of actions. If we do them for the sake of Allah, they will be valid. If we do them for anyone other than Allah, they will be invalid. Some actions, again, we don't want to discuss this yani, fiqhi issues. Some actions, part of it will be valid. Some of them will not be valid because some of those parts, they were done for Allah. Other parts were not done for Allah. You will start your salah for Allah. Then you will extend your salah because people are looking at you. The extension is haram, but the original salah is halal and rewardable. You might start your intention as a good intention. Then later on, while you are doing something else, you change your intention. That's why Sufyan al-Thawri said, I have never treated something more difficult to be treated like what? Ikhlas, like my intention, because it keeps changing. And as many of the early scholars said, Ashaddu shay'in ala as-salihin, the most difficult thing for the righteous people is to what? Is to maintain their ikhlas. Yeah? One of the scholars, Ibn Abi Jamra, he explained Sahih al-Bukhari. And he said, I wish if there were scholars sitting to teach people, to teach them what? How to rectify their intentions. Yeah? His intention is the basis of everything. Because it is the basis of everything. Yeah? As we said, فَمَنْ كَانَ يَرْدُ لِقَاءَ رَبِّهِ فَلِيَعْمَلْ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا وَلَا يُشْرِكْ بِعِبَادَةِ رَبِّهِ أَحَدًا The one who wants to meet Allah Jalla wa Ala, he should do what? Uh -huh. A good deed. عَمَلًا صَالِحًا Al-Fudayl, one of the early scholars, said, عَمَلْ صَالِحْ yeah, The righteous deed is أَخْلَصُهُ وَأَصْوَبُهُ The deed that meets two conditions. Sincerely for Allah and it is according to the Sunnah, or according to the Sharia. So this is the intention. Ikhlas is the action of the heart, and the discussion about Ikhlas takes us to talk about what? Intention, and everything about intention. So we said that Ikhlas will decide the validity of the action. This is one thing. Ikhlas will also decide the level of the reward, not just the validity of the action, but the level of the reward. That's why the Prophet ﷺ said, إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِنِيَةِ Actions are judged by intention. And then he said, وَإِنَّمَا لِكُلِّ مْرِئِمْ مَا نَوَىٰ And each person will get whatever he intended. If he intended good, he will get good. If he intended 70% of it to be for Allah, he will get 70% for it. If he intended something big and his action is small, he will get that big. That's why Ibn al-Mubarak said, رُبَّ عَمَلٍ قَلِيلٍ تُكَثِّرُهُ النِّيَةِ Maybe a small deed, it will be what? It will be huge in terms of reward. Why? Because of the intention. Because of the intention. And maybe a huge work or deed. Huh? It will get a very small reward. Why? Because of intention. Because of intention. That's why we need to be worried about our intentions more than what we are worried about something else. So, the ikhlas will decide the level of reward. Ikhlas also, sometimes because of ikhlas, you will get a reward of something that you didn't do, but you intended to do. And we read the hadith, yeah? In this chapter, in Allah كتب الحسنات والسيئات that Allah decreed the hasanat and the sayyat, and the one who intended to do a hasana, yet he didn't do it, it will be recorded for him as a hasana. If he did it, it will be given to him as ten hasanat. So he didn't do it. We said that there are levels of intention or wanting to do something. 
The first one is just passing thoughts. Yeah, this is not an intention. It's just passing thought. Then you will capture it. Still, it is not intention. Then you will take it seriously. Yes, and you will be inclined to doing it or not doing it. Yeah, so some scholars said because you are inclined to do good deed, it will be rewarded for you. It will be recorded for you as a reward. If you were inclined to do bad deed, but you didn't do it, yes, it might be a reward for you, but it will not be sin for you because you intended it. And this is the level of ham. This is the start of ham. فَمَنْ هَمَّ بِحَسَنَةٍ So you decided to do it. Okay? Then the fourth level is when you confirm that you will do it. Yeah? This is another level. This will give you hasana if you intended to do good hasana. And many scholars said that this will give you a sayyah if you decided and confirmed that you want to do the sayyah. Yeah? This is the fourth level. The fifth level, as we said, is what? Is when you decided and you started some actions towards that deed. Mm -hmm. Towards that deed. This will be recorded for you as good deeds. However, if it was a bad deed, what will happen? If you did it, it will be one single bad deed. If it is one sayya. If you refrained from doing it, it will be what? One hasana because you refrained. If you could not do it because of external factors and your plan was to do it and you actually started to do it, then it will be what? A sayyah for you as if you have done it. And the intention was there and you started. You started, started it and that's why the Prophet ﷺ said in Hadith Abi Bakr, Nufayr ibn al-Harith, إِذَا تَقَاتَلَ When the Muslims are fighting each other, then the qatil, the killer, and the killed, both of them will be in the fire of hell. They said, Ya Rasulullah, yeah, we understand that the murderer will be in the fire of hell. The one who killed, he killed, he committed something. But what about the person who was killed? Will he also be punished? And you said that both of them will be in the hellfire. Of course, not necessarily in the same level, but they both will be punished. He said, yes, because he was planning to what? To kill. So this is, as we said, the various levels of intention. This was the last one where he decided to do and he started to carry out some actions to do it. So he will be what? He will be punished. And this also reminds us of Hadith Abi Barza. When the Prophet وسلم, long beautiful hadith, we don't have time to mention it. He said the dunya is divided among four people. Mm -hmm. The first one is a person who was given wealth and he was given wisdom as well. Because of his wisdom, he is spending his wealth for the best deeds. So he will be in the highest level of Jannah. The second person, he was given wisdom, but he was not given what? Wealth. Because of the wisdom that he was given, he is saying, Ya Allah, Wallahi, if I was given, is what he was given, I will do the same. The Prophet Sallallahu said, فَهُمَا فِي الْأَجْرِ سَوَى They will receive the same amount of what? Reward. Of reward. In contrast, there is another person. He was an evil person. He was given wealth and he was not given ilm. He was an evil person. So he is using the wealth, yeah? to do all bad deeds, all bad deeds. So Allah Jalla will put him in the lowest side of the fire of hell. His friend, he is worse than him, miskeen. No wealth, yeah. no knowledge. No wealth, no knowledge, no iman, no wisdom, nothing. And this person, because of this, he says, Wallahi, if I was given this, I will do all these bad things. Subhanallah, we have in our communities, societies, people like this. Yeah? And he will say, if I have this, I will do all these bad things. He will be in the same level in the fire of hell as well. So the conclusion, my dear brothers and sisters, 
we need to make sure that we are establishing ikhlas in all of our life. Yeah? One important thing that might be covered, inshallah, how to turn the normal deeds into ibadat. And we said in one hadith, yeah, you need to make sure that there is a good motivation behind even the normal actions. And once there is a good motivation behind the normal actions, then that will turn the normal actions such as sleeping, such as eating, such as going for work, it will turn them to be what? Good deeds and acts of ibadah and you will be rewarded for them. We ask Allah Jalla to make us among those who do things for him, to establish ikhlas in their life, to help their families and their children, to help everyone to establish ikhlas in their life, in all their affairs, whatever they do, whatever they speak, whatever they intent. Jazakallah khair. Brothers and sisters, that's the conclusion of this chapter of Al-Ikhlas. Please come back to us in the next episode where we shall move on to the section of Tawbah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. He created the universe, to him belong the heavens and the earth.